What is going on everybody? Welcome to part 18 of our machine learning with Python tutorial series. In this tutorial, we're going to take the k nearest neighbors algorithm that we wrote. It appears to be working and then we're going to be testing it on some real world data. And we're going to use that exact same data set, that breast cancer data set. And then when we get our accuracy back, we're going to compare our accuracy to the scikit-learn accuracy to see if we did about the same. And what I, what I want you to think about is, um, should we or should we not get either identical or almost identical results? Or, or will the scikit-learn classifier um, do much better than us under the same, uh, let's say, k equals 5 um, parameter? So think about that as we go. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up some stuff. We're going to get rid of this information here. We're going to get rid of the matplotlib stuff. We are not going to be graphing. There are way too many, um, <laughs> way too many dimensions for that one. Also, do we, oh, I was going to say, I thought, we, how could we not have NumPy? Uh, we're going to add after collections, we're going to bring in uh, import pandas as PD. And we're going to also import random pandas so we can load in that data set random um, so we can shuffle it. So we're going to shuffle that data set because we're not using scikit-learn at all here. Uh, we are doing this ourselves from scratch. Okay. So <laughs> except for the pandas part, that's good. That would take way too long, <laughs> but the algorithm. Okay. Anyway, um, no one is amused. Anyway, we'll get rid of that too. So it's just the function in the imports. So here, um, the first thing we're going to do is df equals pd dot read underscore csv. Whoops, csv. And don't forget that csv, let me just copy and paste it. It's that breast cancer Wisconsin data. Copy, paste, and don't forget the dot txt like I did that one time. Now we're going to do df dot replace, of course, just like before. We get rid of the question marks and we'll replace that with negative 99,999. Now that you understand k nearest neighbors, hopefully you understand what I was explaining before about that significant outlier. That, that distance is quite large. <laughs> so chances are under these cir circumstances, the only time something would compare to something like that is if they shared um, a missing data point. So anyway, but we'll keep it there anyways. Oh, and we need in place equals true. Uh, let's see, df replace uh, in place equals true. Now we're gonna df dot drop and we're dropping the ID column. Same reasons as before, that's a worthless column. And if you recall, um, Accuracy went down to like 56 or something percent, or was it 51? I can't even remember. It was very close to, you know, a coin toss. So uh, big deal there. Uh, full data, we're going to say is df.asType float um, dot values dot to list. And the reason I'm doing this is for some reason, this data frame, like if I go print, uh, let's do print df.head. And I'll just comment this out for now. Hopefully we'll get what I'm trying to show you. Uh, I'm not seeing it, but it exists. Um, for some reason, some of these were coming through as quotes. Maybe because I've updated, maybe it won't, but I'm pretty sure it will. So we just want to make sure that we've converted it to float. Everything in this data frame ought to be an int or a float. It happens to most, everything here will be an int. But if you wanted to reuse this code, it would need to be float most likely. Um, so anyway, we're going to convert it to a float. Um, and then dot values dot to list. So now, um, we've got the data. Now we're going to shuffle the data. Now keep in mind in this case, we can shuffle the data because what we've done is we've converted this to a list of lists. So for example, let me just print, um, full data. Um, and we'll do the first 10 and I think I hit run. <laughs> Here we go. Right. Okay, so as you can see, there's the first elements and keep in mind the two is, if I recall right, benign and a four would be malignant, but I don't see a four at the moment. Um, and just, uh, let me do this real quick. I just wanna, you don't have to follow this. I just wanna see, cause I knew this, yeah. So so converting it to a list here, you can see like this one is in quotes. It's, it's being treated as a string for some reason. So this com column for whatever reason um, is treated as a string, probably because it had a question mark in it um, but then again, I don't know because it's been replaced. I, I really don't know why it's doing that. But anyway, that's why we're saying as type flow dot value to list. So anyways, there's our data. So, um, at this point we can shuffle this data and we're not losing the 
um, relationship of the features to the label. It's all part of the same list, right? So we can shuffle this and not lose anything. So now we're going to say random.shuffle full underscore data. And just um, to show print, let's do print full data. Um, we'll do to, to, to five and then we'll print full data again to five after 20 pound signs just to uh, exemplify something. So um, I just wanted to show that shuffle applies. You don't have to redefine. So the first one starts with five, one, 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 two, and this one is five, two, three, and so on. So the shuffle works. And that was something that always confused me initially. I would always try to do the following. I would try to redefine the variable like full data equals random dot shuffle full data. That's, that's not how it, how it works. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's that. So we, we've shuffled the data now. And um, this is going to be our version of train test split. It's going to be really high quality code. So we're going to say test size equals 0 0.2. And then we're going to say the train set is uh, 2 colon empty list, 4 colon empty list. And then test set equals 2 colon empty list. We should have just copied this 4 colon empty list. Anyway. Uh, train set, test set, and then we're going to say train uh, train data is equal to the full data. Um, whoops, not parentheses, uh, brackets. To the negative integer value of the test size times the len of full data. So we're just, we're multiplying the whole test size 0 0.2. We're, we're we're using that to create an, an index value, and then we're just slicing it based on that index value. We've converted it to an int, so it's a whole number and, and all that fun stuff. So we've done that, and let's just copy this, paste, and now rather than colon minus, it would just be um, minus int, um, minus that, basically two, let's see, two here. So this would be everything up to the last 20% of data. And then um, this will be test. We need to rename this. Test data will be the last 20% of the data. Okay. So now, so we've shuffled the data. We've sliced the data. And now what we need to do is um, populate the dictionaries because we built this to want a dictionary. So now we're going to populate these dictionaries and populating them super quick and easy because all we have to do is the following. Um, so we're going to say for i in train data, we could make a one line for loop here. We really ought to, but I'm not going to. Uh, train underscore set. Um, I, basically this will be I negative one. What are we doing here? So we're saying train set I negative one, which is neg the negative first element in those lists. Remember the last column is the class column. That's why we're using negative one. That's the last value. So that is either a two or a four, right? And recall two is benign, four is malignant. So that's how we're identifying which one of these in the dictionary we want to be a part of. So train set, um, I negative one dot append append um, I all the way to negative one. So now we are appending lists into this list, and that list is elements up to the last the last element. So again, you wouldn't want to have the one of the attributes being the class because you would get it right every time, most likely. K nearest neighbors actually might not, but um, but yeah, you don't want to do that. So now we've done that. Now what we need to do is basically the exact same thing only for the test data. So, so let's take this copy, paste, change train to test, train set to test, and you're good. Now, um, and again, you could make this one line, but uh, I didn't want to do that simply because of the I negative one and that whole stuff that was kind of confusing probably. So anyways, uh, we're done with that. Oops, what has happened? Come down here. So we've populated our, um, our dictionaries. So what's left? 
really nothing. We just need to pass the information through to K nearest neighbors. So basically what we're gonna say is we're gonna say, um, f let's measure, um, we'll say correct equals zero and total equals zero. And we're just gonna create a simple counter here. We're gonna say is for group in test set, what do we wanna do? We're gonna say for data in test set group. So for each group, in the test set, so this is test set. So for each of these two and four, we're testing these. And then we're gonna say for the data in test set group, so just that list of features, right? So that's what we're about to feed through to predict. And we're doing this just, so predict is, is these lists from the test set, right? And then as you might be able to guess, what we're gonna pass through data, which goes here, which we iterate through every single point and calculate the distance, is gonna be the dictionary from uh, the train set, okay? So for data in test set group, we're gonna say the vote is equal to K nearest neighbors, and we pass train set, uh, that data, which is the features, and we're gonna say K equals five, um, simply because if you look at the scikit-learn documentation for K nearest neighbors, they are using a default value of five, so we're gonna copy that. Then what we're gonna, all we have to ask at this point to know if we were right or wrong is if group equals vote, <laughs> right? If if the group that they that they came from for the from the test set because the test set we know what the answer is, so if that group is equal to the vote we got from our k nearest neighbors classifier, congratulations, plus equals one for you. Um, otherwise, are also what we need to do is total plus equals one. Okay, so um, now we're basically done. So now we would just print, um, maybe we would say uh, accuracy, colon, comma, and then accuracy is just the correct, correct out of the total. So let's save and run that and see if we, if we get any errors. Oh, we shouldn't be printing this out. Oh, this is disgusting. <laughs> okay, it went pretty quick anyway. Accuracy, 0.978. So 97.8% accuracy. Boom, look at us. Okay, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, comment that out. <laughs> okay, so, um, so that's, we've applied it. And uh, now what we wanna do is compare that. Uh, let's run it one more time without that nasty output. We're gonna compare that, so I ran it again, 95.6% accuracy. Okay, so now what I wanna do is have us uh, compare this to uh, scikit-learn. So we're gonna do that, and then also we're going to calculate confidence. Uh, and we're gonna do that in the next tutorial. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever, up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, in the next tutorial, that's what we're gonna do. Um, also, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.